Hey everybody, welcome back to the 2024 calendar shoot for fire and safety services. Today, we're in Succasana, New Jersey, Roxbury Engine Company number one. I'm with Battalion Chief Tommy Balancia and Past Chief John Haywick Sr. Today, we get to look and dive in to behind the bill. This morning, we got to walk around. We looked at your beautiful new tower ladder. You guys have just purchased a 2023 Pierce Enforcer, mid-mount ascendant tower ladder. A lot of different things on that build. Something that we want to talk about too today is the fact that that was a stock build. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But really what the behind the build video series is about is really getting to understand the fire company and fire department behind the build. So here's the thing, right? John, 50 plus years in the volunteer fire service. You're yes. a past chief yep. of the fire department. Tommy, you're the, currently the battalion chief. You guys represent a good mix of what your fire company is. Yeah. I'd love to dive in a little bit, maybe about the history of the fire company and so on. But Chief, first off, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks for working with Fire and Safety on this project and allowing us in and seeing the truck and sitting down with you guys. Thank you for coming. Yeah, for sure. John, 50 plus years in the fire service, my man. History, yeah. culture, tradition, it's abound here. I walked around the firehouse, there's a lot of trophies, pictures, memories. I've been in four different departments. I started in 1971 as, an, as a civil defense auxiliary to a paid department of the city of Passaic. Then moved on to uh, East Patterson when I moved, back out to Long Island for 10 years, and I've been here for over 30. Wow. Uh, the tradition in this house is, is excellent, and, is, and, and the whole township, uh, whether it's company one, two, or three, everybody has the pride in what they do. Uh, it gets a little competitive at times, sure. but that's okay. And it's no different than any place else that I've been. Uh, as I said, every firehouse is the same, just the names and the faces change. That's right. But uh, tradition is, is a, a big part of anything we do here. Uh, and uh, one of our past members that just passed away was very adamant with that, that this is a firehouse. You know, it's not, it's not the, uh, a hall that we're going to rent out, or it's not this, or it's not that. Uh, it's a firehouse. Let's make sure it's a firehouse. If we want to rent the hall, rent the hall. But the people have to know this is a firehouse. Yeah, I love that. Chief, a little background about yourself. Next year off, 25 years here of service here at company number one. <clears throat> in my uh, time here, I've served as captain in all the other officers' roles in the, in, in the firehouse. Yeah. Uh, currently, this is my first year as battalion chief. Um, and just looking forward to growing the company, the department, and uh, making sure that we keep on training, progressing, and not looking back, even though we want to know about the tradition. Sure. Because that helps us go forward. Yeah, so 100% uh, volunteer department. Yes. Correct. Uh, talk to me about your runs, how many runs a year typically in the, in the makeup of the town, so people get an understanding of what, you know, Sakasana looks like. Uh, typically, uh, departmental-wide, it's about 800 calls a year. Okay. Uh, we, the town's made up of multiple uh, different areas. We have four highways that come through our town, so we do do a lot of MBAs with entrapment. Um, the interstate, for one, we're up on the interstate sure. multiple times a day, uh, usually. So um, besides that, we do have structure fires, gas leaks, uh, service calls. Uh, we have a multitude of commercial structures in our response district, uh, which includes multiple malls. Uh, so we are pretty busy during the holidays. Yeah, and as time ticks on, I mean, I'm sure there's been a tremendous surge in, you know, sprawl here, right? Yes, Because right. I know, Absolutely. so this is uh, a little bit west of where I am in New Jersey, and so it's a little more, or used to be, a little more rural. But driving around today, guys, there's a lot happening here. When I moved here in 1986, the mall across the street was... Uh, a mere 10 stores. Yeah. You see what it is now. I mean, that had been uh, a, a uh, Home Depot was over there, or there was a Rickles there at one time. Rickles, things, yeah. Things have changed. Yeah. And the, the, the amount of stores that we have in this place, the amount of eateries that we have in this town uh, has changed tremendously. Every, every facility, every area, shopping area has grown continue to grow. Yeah. Which is, uh, and that for us, that's, that's okay. It keeps us busy. But uh, again, with the, the Fire Prevention uh, Bureau and what they're doing in this town has also helped us yeah. to, to keep the runs down. I think what's really interesting, right, a big part of the conversation, though, is being 100% volunteer, you rely on your residents to help in a Correct. few different ways, right? Obviously through fund drives and awareness and things like that. But we're also looking for members. 
Correct. We need people to volunteer, and that's becoming more and more difficult, not just here, but everywhere. And I think that's a result of the housing boom and the increase in money that these houses are costing. And a young person is very difficult to get into this housing market with the the extravagant costs of these houses. Oh, for sure. You know, especially the taxes included as well. Yeah. You know. New Jersey is not an easy place to live. Mm -hmm. So it's yes. hard to raise a family. It's hard to make enough money to live where other parts of the country are certainly much more economically feasible. Yeah, mo most families uh, these days have two incomes, not just a single income. That's right. You know, so, and people are working overtime and other jobs to keep above water. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, growing problem throughout New Jersey as well. For sure, and as you watch call volume increase, the sprawl is happening. You have a lot more people moving outside of the urban centers and moving out into the more rural areas. Mm -hmm. You're getting that sprawl, and, and there's a level of expectation on services. People that are moving here from New York City or the other, you know, other cities moving out, wanting to raise a family now in, this, in, in suburbia, they have a level of expectation that when they dial 911 for fire EMS, that service is gonna arrive in a timely fashion. That's correct. Well, that's one of the things we find out a lot of times. We will show up at a scene, be doing what we're doing, whether it be fire or EMS, and the people that have moved out of a metropolitan area think we're paid. Yes. And they're that's surprised when, if somebody stops at the firehouse and there's nobody here during the day. Yes. Uh, and it's an education process for them so that they understand that, you know, it, if you look at the country, the country's probably 75 to 80% volunteer versus career. And, there, and there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, it's, it's a mindset that the people have to understand and why we're out there doing fun drives, why we're out there uh, doing bake sales and this type of thing in order to take care of a, a building sure. like we have here. Sure. I think what falls in line with that, too, then, is the next logical question to you or, or observation is that, you know, the new tower ladder that we're talking about today, um, that's taking the place of two ladder companies that are in your department. That's correct. Talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, with that being said, it's one of those things like, you know, we have less volunteers. So to put two trucks on a road is a lot more difficult than it is to put one. So by us combining the two trucks into one, it serves the needs of us better because now we can get out there. We're not trying to pick and choose between a, you know, a straight stick versus a tower. This is a combination of the two, and this works for us. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And I think the other thing, too, is to say that it is a quint as well, right? Mm -hmm. yes. John, Correct. talk to me a little bit about the importance of having that pump and, and water on that apparatus. In a, in a volunteer organization, especially in today's day and age, you, you really don't know what your manpower is going to be, especially at daytime calls. So if I can take the, my quint as a first-due apparatus and get there and have 300 gallons of water on it, have a pump on it that I know I can at least get an initial knockdown started. It becomes very important because I'm not always sure what's coming next and how quickly it's going to get there. Sure. Our mutual aid agreements are, are excellent and we know they're coming, but again, it's a, it's a delay in time. So as long as I have a, a pump on that truck and I have water with me, I can get something started. And then as, as, we, uh, as we train our, uh, our people, the, the chauffeur is responsible for, you know, getting his water. Sure. And that's one of the things that the guys kind of look at me when I talk about that. <laughs> and they, you know, you're, you're expected to find anything within 100 feet of your truck. Well, what I, what I find interesting, too, right, so we went around and we were chatting about the setup and, and the ease in setting up that tower ladder, that's right, Chief? That's, that's correct. You had talked about, you know, in under a minute we can get that, you know, the outriggers and downriggers down and the ladder up out of the cradle. And in operation. In operation, right. With living in manpower. Yeah, and so you're now taking, you have two functions of that apparatus. It's a truck company, but it also could potentially stretch out the initial line, right? Yeah, exactly. So where the ease and setup, it's super critical. It almost takes the, the, the job of one person out of the picture. So now you mm -hmm. can do other operations. Let's say there's a rescue. Let's say you, you had to, you know, somebody had to backstretch to a hydrant. You know, that takes away that operational standpoint so that we have more hands to do what we need to do quickly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. So some other considerations, though, right? You guys, obviously, you were looking at um, purchasing a new truck. You, both your trucks were getting older. Um, you were looking to combine two into one. So you guys certainly had some stipulations that you had to check off, right? You had some check boxes that had to be met. That's correct. But you ended up buying a stock 
truck that was currently on the Pierce line. Yeah, and, and with that being said, one of the boxes that needed to be checked was to take delivery of a new truck almost immediately. Yeah. We were in a we were at a point that this needed to be done quickly and we didn't know if we could wait the full term and this basically filled that box perfectly because if we had to wait, we weren't sure what we were going to do. We might have to borrow something from somebody, might have to go out and lease something temporarily, or, you know, or rent it. This was a 15-week build, and we had the truck immediately after we signed the papers, basically. Yeah. And it, it was seamless. Yeah. Timing was perfect. Was perfect. Yeah, it, it, it fell in our laps. <clears throat> um, you know, Pierce has this stock truck mold that they are pushing out trucks and if you were in the right place at the right time which we were mm -hmm. it just kind of came to us and before it came to pierce though you did try other apparatus right john oh we had we had several manufacturers come in bring their trucks down and sit with their uh the representatives to go over what their trucks had what the what they could offer to us and how they would fit in to the mold uh that we needed here for our town Again, we talk maneuverability. Uh, we have some areas up on the up on the mountain and in the landing area where the streets are very, very tight. So getting anything that that was not going to be as maneuverable as what we had with our our small quint uh, became a, a real consideration. And we we took several trucks out and looked at them. And ultimately, the Pierce with the with the extra uh fact that it's got the all wheel steer, yes. steer which came to us which we really didn't look for to begin with made it an, an ideal package for us and, and truth be told that was because we were building a truck and it was a money issue for the town so the truck that we were building was three years out the stock truck was now so we were paying today's prices as opposed to tomorrow's prices so those mm -hmm. extra options actually fit underneath the budget so it made it, made it work for us. Absolutely. Plus, it, it was able to get you a truck in a timely fashion. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we all know how the apparatus market is today, and so it's becoming more and more challenging to get apparatus quickly. And so sure. the lead times have gotten pushed out. So a stock program is certainly an option that people should look at. And I don't think people should be turned away by it either because there is, yes, it's a stock truck. It's being built off the line. However, there are some options to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were able to... Uh, secure our company's color um, and with that being said it was close we were within hours uh, the, the <laughs> town approved it at a town council meeting on a Tuesday night uh, we had the letter of intent in on a Wednesday if not that truck was going to be a stock color red as opposed to our yellow so we made it by moments so I'd love to, uh, perfect segue, Chief, because I was curious about the yellow. Yep. Um, and I think there might be a few different stories that circulate <laughs> about why it's yellow. But, John, as the senior man at this table, I'd love to hear from you if you know the reason behind the, uh, that, um, that color yellow. Well, in, in speaking with uh, Charlie Alpo, who we talk about as being the landlord here, and he passed away just recently, he told me that they, when the yellow... Uh, color came out into the fire service uh, for better visibility at yes. night during the day and that type oh. of thing. They were in the process of, of getting their truck, uh, the one of the, it was a telescort that was coming in, and they decided that, okay, let's get this, let's do it in yellow, let's be ahead of the game. He always wanted to be uh, ahead of what was going on in the industry and what, what things were there. So they decided we would go with the yellow. They named that truck the Yellow Bird. Nice. They put a big I picture of the, of the big bird on the front of it. Yeah. And uh, that's where it started. And since that time, every truck we've brought in has been the chrome yellow. Yeah, I love it. And now with the accent blue color on yes. it. Yes. That is just a sharp looking truck. Yeah, we got we had a lot of compliments from people down in Wildwood when it was out there gleaming in the sun next to the ocean. Um, and people were saying that really it look, does look sharp. Yeah. Well, we went through it this morning. We walked around and um, we walked from bumper to bumper. And we mm -hmm. had a lot of great conversation about the build and how that truck is going to represent exactly what you need here um, in Sakasana. I do want to say this, though. You mentioned um, the, the, the murals on the truck, the yellow bird, right? Yep. Um, as I walked around, I saw that your other apparatus have murals on them, too. And a lot of times when you see things like that, it really speaks to the company culture that's here. How important is that? It is important. It's, it's, it's good for the morale of the people, of, mm. our, of our firefighters. 
you know, and, and, it, and it tells a story about us. Um, so that we are unique. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously the color of our truck speaks to that. Um, I always like to tell a story. Uh, we went to a mutual aid fire uh, a few towns away a few years ago, and my father, who now lives in Florida, turned on the news, and the fire was on the news. He said, I know that Tommy's there because he saw the yellow truck. I love that. <laughs> because I, all the other trucks are red yeah. and black and white and yeah. red. But that yellow truck stood out. He said, I know he's there. Yeah. So, so it just, that's just us. Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. I love that. I just, I think that things like that matter. Um, and we can't lose sight of that. And mm -hmm. so for you to maintain that and we're, we're able to keep that yellow color. Yes. Is awesome. And, and, and it was one of those things that. I, we were looking for a truck, and because this was going to be a stock truck, we actually almost we almost gave that up because we weren't sure we we needed a truck. Right. So if it was going to be red, we almost gave that up. But luckily, fortunately for us, we were able to maintain the traditions of this firehouse with the stock truck without having to go jump through hoops. I love it. I love it. Take me forward. Where are we headed from here with the Roxbury Engine Company? What's the future look like? We're, we're lucky here in this in this house, in yeah. Company One, that we have a good influx of young firefighters coming up all the time. They'll move into town, they'll be here for two, three, four years, and then maybe move out because they either can't afford to live here or get a better job someplace, or we have a lot of our, our members that go on to become uh, career firefighters, yes. and that's excellent. But uh, And somehow, as we lose one, we get one or two more back in. That's good. And it, it is. It really is. It, uh, it's a change from a lot of the other departments that I, that I talk to that are having a real problem with their manpower. I think our, our biggest manpower problem is that you know, nobody works in these towns anymore. Right. Where we used to have you know, the, uh, the DPW and everybody else working, and the guys were members of the department. During the day, a call would come in. They would be. A, they were able to leave, and they would come down. We just don't have those people anymore. Right. Things have things have changed, and and probably changed for the better for the for the township, uh, with services being uh, put out to outside vendors and that type of thing. From a taxpayer standpoint, uh, you know, I like that, but uh, <laughs> I, you know, I don't necessarily like the fact that uh, we don't have as many people available during the day as I'd like to see. Yeah. I get that, and I, I think um, I think that's the story in a lot of places. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's it's stationwide, you know, right. countrywide. It's right. just, you know, everybody's talking the same thing. John, something you um, something you just brought up that is important to me as well. Uh, my home department puts out a lot of career firefighters. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of kids that join the fire department at 16 years in the in the junior program, from 16 to 18. At 18, they become probationary members. They go all in. We get them the training they need. They're a valued asset to us. And then it's so fun for myself, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way, is when we put guys into the career field because they learn that through their exposure from their volunteer days. Correct. They fell exactly. in love with it because our departments, our companies, and that culture curated them uh, and gave them the foundation they needed to want to pursue it as a career. So I think that that speaks hugely to what's happening here. Yeah. Um, I know that to be true for us as well, and I'm very proud of that. That I mean, I can't even tell you how many guys in the last 10 years that are now career firefighters. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, we lose them yes. <laughs> on the volunteer mm -hmm. side. But a lot of times they mm -hmm. volunteer elsewhere and so on. But I really think that that's a, a great message here is how important a strong foundation is. Yeah, and, and with that being said, a lot of our guys that have gone on to career jobs as firefighters come back to the company and help us train they they take awesome. what they learned here yeah they go there they continue on and they bring back some of the trainings and techniques that they pick up and that's huge for our guys yeah absolutely you know absolutely. and, and, and that, that we pride ourselves on that as well yeah no that's great and that's many of the guys message. have remained volunteers while they while they were in career mm -hmm. uh, for a number of years until family obligations got a little bit too much you know is what it, and they have to say okay I have to stand back a little bit, but uh, we have been very lucky that way that these guys have been able to come back to us and stay with us. And uh, again, you know, uh, you know my son, I'm proud of sure. him, just retired Absolutely. as a battalion chief out of the city of Passaic. Right. Loved that. the fire service and uh, got it all started because of, you know, what he basically saw me doing, got into it, enjoyed it, and it's his life's passion. Yes. Yeah. Well said. Very well said. The family business. The family yeah. business. 
And my daughter currently is a member here. She's going to be the captain of the first day squad next year. It's fantastic. You know, John's other daughter. My daughter and my son-in-law are also members here. Yeah, so it's yeah. a family business here. There's something about that. I mean, it's a family business for me as well. Um, and it's just something about that. I think families that raise their children in the fire service or in the EMS space, um, there's just a little bit something different about them. And I think when you're exposed to a civic minded organization like the Volunteer Fire Company, um, it opens up uh, a different way of, I don't know, uh, viewing life, yep. right? Oh, they open their eyes. Yeah. I mean, it's an eye opener. Yeah, but it's also being part of something bigger than just the individual, you know? It, it's a family affair. Mm. And, and that's, it's always seen down here anytime you have a problem in, in your family, you have something going on that's not good, whether it's sickness or whatever, there are people around to come help you immediately. Yes. You don't have to ask. Somebody finds out, oh, this person's having a problem. All of a sudden, you've got more people than, than you know what to do with. A uh, good example that I use, my wife had a, uh, a medical problem one time, and uh, I, I dialed 911. I had 15 people from this department in my living room within about five minutes. I believe it. I've Plus seen it firsthand, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So, you know, everybody takes care of everybody else. And, that, yeah. and that's the, the, the beauty part of this whole thing. The way it should be. Yes, yeah. exactly. I love that. Exactly. So let me change gears a little bit as we wind down in this conversation. Um, the truck, behind the build, learning about the department and so on. There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on relationships. And um, I have a firm belief that when you buy an apparatus, um, and, and the apparatus represents the department and the, you know, the territory that you respond in and, and, and take care of emergencies in, um, it's the relationship with the dealer as well that is super critical, mm -hmm. right? We need reliability. We need a uh, mutual understanding and respect for one another so that we have a true partner. Talk to me a little bit about fire and safety services and what they bring to the table for you guys. Fire and safety, <clears throat> Eric Trevinas specifically, uh, We'll talk about him first. Yeah. Um, every time I pick up the phone and call them, I had a question about this build or something else about the truck. Hey, can it do this? Can it do that? We needed to do this. Can we change this? It was ne no hesitation. It was seamless. He worked with us 100%. You know, I would call, we would talk about whatever it had to do with that truck and going forward, and it was very, very easy. I called down to fire and safety about another issue and about a problem, maybe something broke. The guys down there are outstanding. They are, they're ready to help you. They're ready to fix the problem. They want to make sure it works. They understand that they get it. It's a piece of equipment. It breaks. It is what it is. They help you. Eric Trevina is the salesman for yes. this county, right? So yes. that's how you have Eric as your, as your salesman. Hunter. Super knowledgeable. I know Eric personally myself. Um, I know what a valued asset he is to fire and safety, but he's a tremendous asset to his clients. I mean, he's just a wealth of knowledge, and he's very well spoken and put together incredibly organized. I mean, it's it's fun to work with him on projects, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, like I said, I can't say enough about Eric and yeah. how he assisted us in, you know, getting this truck from start to finish, uh, it, you know, the right way. It's, yeah. it's the way it should be done, and he's, he's a good dude. Yeah, good nice. Guy. I love that. John, dependability of the dealer network, preventative, preventative maintenance, all of that. It, it, it's very crucial for us because, again, being a department with X amount of pieces of apparatus, if one goes down, we're going to have one ladder truck in town. That ladder truck goes down, we don't have another ladder. We will not have another ladder. So that's got to be repaired right away. And we know that we can make a phone call and get them to come in here. If the repairs can be done in-house the next day or within a day or two, that's great. If it has to go out, we know they're going to do everything that they can do to get that truck back on the line and in service for us as quick as possible. I love that. Yep. Good. You know, it's always important, right? I mean, we need partnerships. We can't do it all alone. And so to have a dealer um, that is bought into the process and, and to their um, to their customers, it becomes more than just a customer and vendor relationship. It's a friendship. Yes. It's partnership. Yes. Good. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the invite today to be here, to be part of the 2024 calendar shoot for fire and safety. Um, I just, you know, it's nice to take a few minutes and learn a little bit about you guys and, and the fire company. Um, congratulations on the build. Thank you. And uh, thank looking you. forward to seeing it in service. Yes. Maybe taking in a few fires along the way. Absolutely. And um, I'm excited to see what the future holds for, uh, for the company and for the apparatus.
Thank very you good. Again. Thank you thank very you. much thank for joining you. us. Appreciate good. Thank you. you. Guys, thanks for tuning in. This is the 2024 Behind the Build with the Roxbury Engine Company, Sakasana, New Jersey. Battalion Chief Tommy Balancia and past chief and 50-year uh, volunteer firefighter John Haywick Sr. And I'm Jeremy, National Fire Radio.